<laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Fake Fairy Tale, and this is the seventh installment in the Let's Recreate a Sewers battle map, the top of the battle map currently in the Dungeon Draft subreddit. And today I would like to focus on the jail section that we have here. I'm still working uh, on the, the hallways and beautifying those. I'll just continue to do so and I've made some minor additions to some sections of the sewers but I'll, I'll recap to that in a future video uh, when there's a bit more to talk about. However for today I would like to focus on the first proper room in the dungeon which is going to be the jail. Um, like we mentioned I'm not going to consult the original map. I'm going to design this room to my own vision and uh, there are a few things I would definitely like to try out. And I think would look uh, very neat in here. Now before we begin I do would like to remind you guys to hit that sub notification bell to stay up to date of all my content. I release a new video about once every week and if you'd like to support the channel I also have a Patreon page where I have the battle maps that I've created in the past along with some tokens as a reward. And with that out of the way let's just dive right in. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove the objects that we have in here. So let's first select that and remove that and this one and remove. So this is going to be a guard house uh, or a guard post. Um, so I think we just need a table and maybe a few uh, torture equipment things laying about here and there. And it will be quite gross and maybe a chest in there somewhere that they can store the, the stuff of the prisoners like you see in, uh, in Oblivion and Skyrim. And um, for here we need like at least two or three jail cells and some torture equipment. And I think that way we have uh, we'll have an excellent jail cell that will give a proper scare to uh, anyone who gets caught by the Thieves Guild. And I would like to start off with the floor. And that's because I saw a video by Bailey Wiki, one of his advanced tutorial videos, where he did something interesting that I would like to try out which is create um, an offset in the floor so that the center part of the floor is lower than the edge and by using some of the line tools and um, darkening out the tiles in the middle. And I would just want to give that uh, a quick try, see how it looks and if we, can, uh, if we can make it work in our favor. So in order to do that, we're going to need the path tool and we're going to find the minor line. I'm not entirely sure what it's called. It used to be the wibbly wobbly line. Um, but I don't believe it still is. Should be somewhere in the shadow path. And there it is. It's still called the wibbly wobbly line. That's great. And we'll snap the grid and we need it to be on top of the floor. Well, it is. And I think I want it to be a bit thicker because right now it just falls away in the, uh, in the edge. So we'll just place that on 120 maybe. I think that might be sufficient and let's use that in the central area um, and then we'll just create a grate in the middle as if it's meant to you know clean this whole area I just throw in a few buckets of water and um, hose down the blood back into the sewer system that maybe has some pipes running below maybe we can have a pipe coming out on this side I think that would actually work quite well so let's take the wibbly wobbly line that we have here and we're going to just line this entire thing. And there we go. And what we're going to do now is just take a very thin a shadow path. Like the shadow path small 50. And we'll make that more or less as small as can be. 0 0.22. I think that could work. Let's give it a check. works perfectly there we go and now in order to put an emphasis on this we will take a shadow pattern I'm just going to ever so slightly darken out the center there we have the pattern We'll do it with this shadow path 20. We'll make it a custom shape. We have to make sure that it's on top of the original floor. It is. 
And um, now I think of it, the first thing that we want to do is add that offset. The tile offset because we want the tile offset to go below this. So we'll add that to the room just along the edges. I don't think this should interfere with, uh, with the lines that we've already placed. There we go. That looks already way better. And then we're going to add in the shadow pattern. We'll make it a custom shape. Okay, this already works, but I'm not entirely satisfied. I think it's because we need a bit of uh, extra shadows. Yeah. Okay, so in order to put more of an emphasis on um, the indentation, we're just going to add in another a small shadow path 25. And I'm going to put this at 0 0.4 to have the shadow draw out a bit further from the edge. And I think this actually might do the trick reasonably well. All right, there we are. I think this is at least somewhat better. Um, and I don't want to dwell on this too long, so let's continue from here. But it is starting to look uh, as intended. Very cool. Okay. Now, the way I envision this is uh, with some kind of grate in the middle. And I think we're going to create that customly by adding in a pattern shape. And we're just going to place that in the middle, more or less, let's say over here. And we're just going to give it a nice finish using some of the curb edges. And we'll just darken out this area in the middle um, underneath the grate so you don't see that it's just placed on top of the floor. And in order to make that easier for ourselves, let's do this at uh, layer 2 so that we can take layer 1 and use layer 1 to, um, to make it dark. So let's take shadow 50 for that, place that underneath maybe one more. Oh, then we're at 100 that we don't want so let's say we're going for 75 yeah that's okay and now we're going to need some curbs that we're going to place in here and i think the regular curbs might work well for this we do have to put the width back on one and now we're going to grab the curb objects Snap those to grid and make sure that these, um, hmm. Align nicely. There we go. Place that on top. Then we're going to grab this one, which is the curb stony earth, the connector. And we're going to place that on the rough looking edges. So over here. And over here and I think that's all right yeah and now we're going to take the pattern shape again and that will have to be on layer three we're not going to have much to work with here when it comes to the layers because we're using up quite a lot for the floor that should be okay. Let's just follow these lines. Mm, I'm not entirely satisfied with how this is turning out. I'm going to quickly fast forward and redo it with the same uh, pathway that we used here. That might make it look better uh, and blend it in better with the, uh, the original tile set. All right, and we're back. And I think this is already looking better. It's not flawless, but that's, I guess, the limitations of Dungeon Draft that we're just going to encounter. And I think in the overall design of the map, it might be nice to have something that has a bit of a different um, tint to it than just the regular stone that we see everywhere. 
Okay, so we have this, and now we're going to continue with, uh, I think, the most prominent objects here, which will be the cells. And let's see if we can make this multi-layered. And if we can place it in a way, I think that we're just going to have some sort of um, simple bars over here that work reasonably well. So for that one, um, we're going to need a pillar and some iron bars. And on this side, we're going to just add in two cages that will place just a tad of the edge. I think we can place this in layer one. Seems like we can. And I do want them to be, be rusty and deteriorated. So we'll take that as the bottom and place one over here. We'll add in some doors. Yeah, and we have three cages. That should be sufficient. And I will take the top lid and we'll and we'll place that on layer 300 so that it will blend in um, and it will be covered by the shadows of the walls that we're going to add. So we'll place that on top. We'll take another lid on here. And then we'll need the doors on layer 200. So let's keep them both open just have a corpse or a skeleton maybe in one of the two that we can place in there there we are and then we're going to take one pillar on this side yeah i think such a connector could work and i will place it um a bit further out this will just be a larger cell i will just use these um, cell bars metal gray which are a uh, pathway a ribbon put the width on one and we'll add in a door on the right hand side here i think it makes a lot of sense so we'll grab a door this will look like it's relatively new because it's also sort of constructed so maybe the guild wanted to uh, use this as a temporary hideout, but have been here for sufficiently long that they decided to just build this in. And I think this pillar is a bit too big, so we'll reduce it in size somewhat. And then move this backwards, make sure that it aligns. And then let's see if we can get lucky here. Again, and then we'll take a stone pillar and we'll use that to connect the fence to the stone walls maybe like so that might be a bit big though so let's make that smaller and just place it on the absolute edge over here and so we have this um well three bedroom apartment so next up, I think we want some benches along the wall because we have these awesome stone wall benches that I think will look great in here because they already got chains attached to them. Let's turn on the grid for a moment. And I think one is sufficient. Maybe this one is actually even a bit too big. We'll do it just with a smaller one. Yeah, I think that's better. It's on layer two. We want a maybe metal or stone table. Let's add in a wooden table. Yeah, I think that would work. We'll make it a relatively small one. I think this should suffice. You'd only use it to strap somebody on top of it and torture them. So that's, I guess, kind of okay. And we'll just place that over the grate so that they can just wash over all the blood uh, quite easily. Um, let's make sure it aligns with the grid somewhat there. So that's a relatively short distance to um, get people from the cages to the table. And we'll add in the blood and grime later. But uh, for now, this will do. Maybe add in some lanterns as well so that we can um, already think about where the light might be coming from. We'll take these rusty ones. Because I like them a lot, but I do want it to be like this, that they are attached to the walls. And we'll put them in layer 4. And in a few places where they can quite easily be lit over here. 
great. Um, we can use a weapon rack because that will suits as a, a rack for torture equipment very well, I think. And we might be able to add in some blood and grime on there as well. Yeah, I think this will work. Um, let's see, we want that to be easily accessible. So let's place that along the edge here. I'll set it at a really minor offset along the edge over here. Then we need another table. And I would prefer it to be this rather thin um, and wide. Like so. And then we can place a lot of uh, torture equipment on top of that. And now with this offset in the floor that I didn't really think through entirely, I noticed is that um, it's not likely for anything to be standing against the wall. Um, the table could be, but potentially we need to um, attach it to the wall with some chains. See if we've got anything to work with here that uh, could do that trick. Oh, I think these would work really well. Uh, health chains, I think these are the ones by uh, White Fox works actually. Yeah, they're actually perfect. Now I only need something that makes it look like they're attached to the table. And for that we can use this floor hoop. We'll size that up. That might be a bit too large. Slap it on on layer 2. I'll just give the sense that it's locked into position like that. And we also need something on the wall there um, so that they're attached to the wall as well. And for that, we'll just use these uh, wall rings. I think that will work. And um, now we have ourselves a display table suspended in the air. And that's great. And while we're at it, we don't have a proper prison if we don't have uh, chains laying around everywhere, of course. So we're going to need to place these down. I think we're going to place one underneath the bench so that they can just put this on top. Maybe that works better. Because we don't want to make things too cluttered. Uh, so we'll suspend that on the wall and let's make that kind of fresh as if it's rather new and then we'll add in some floor chains here as well uh, to keep people in their place so that they can't run out but from here they should be able to more or less reach the entire thing right do we even really care and we need a proper amount of chains in the middle here or we'll hide the edges because it looks a bit off just like that and maybe a ball and chain as well and we'll just put it here so that we can um, hide that in the corner with some shadows and that'll blend the whole thing in together um, and on top of here we'll just add in one or two of these newer manacles uh, so that um, well, they can use it to maybe attach somebody to the table. And while I'm saying this, I also think it's a marvelous idea to add that on top of the table. And we're just sort of git bashing uh, something together here. I don't want them to be too big, but I think, and they have to be in the same offset as the table. So 0 0.6 should work. And then we'll add in the, right there we are. And we have some, um, Brown sludge. Let's leave it at that. I think that sums up that area for now. Um, let's focus on the tools that we have in here. I'm just going to use a variety of tools that um, we can think of can be used in a gruesome way. Uh, we can actually just grab a crate and maybe put something in the corner as well.
right and how it stands right now it looks like a mess but if we apply some shading to that uh, it should be much better and although i mentioned that i want a skeleton inside the cages i think i'm not gonna because it doesn't really make much sense that there would be a skeleton because that would rot and stink and why the hell would you even leave it in here so maybe just some kind of hay again that we can place underneath um inside the cages to create some variety in what you see uh, and also because it's relatively easy to clean um, because if somebody's going to uh, live in that cage for quite a while you can bet that they're going to soil themselves and if you want to clean that up kind of easily i think it will work to just uh, put in some hay there and also you don't want to treat all prisoners as the worst people ever of course maybe they capture some other crime lord or sorts i will grab a blanket and we'll just place that on top of it at a regular scale and when we add in the so and when we add in the shadows that will look great now i want some buckets barrels and some regular uh some regular crates to just fill up the space a little bit so we'll use these barrels over here. We'll make them a bit smaller so that they can be positioned on top of that edge uh, without causing issues. Um, so that would be perfect over there. And a crate, but I don't we're going to need to add that much. Because we're getting quite close to, um, to finish. That's a lid, right? Okay, yeah, I think I want to use that lid for the crate over here just do it like so it's all right maybe we can place something on top of there and look at it maybe we can place a chest because crates are quite big um so maybe a chest is a more suitable option here if we keep that on layer one we can place it in front of here And see if we can add in one crate, maybe two in a different color um, than most of the woodwork here. Of course, some diversity in the colors that we see. Over there. And I think, yeah, I think that is sufficient here for now. Um, so the next thing that I would like to do is to add some grime and some dirt and some shading in here. Uh, though I think I'm going to do that in the next video because I'm running quite long um, and I didn't expect it to take this long uh, to well, work on this room. And uh, the next video will uh, will apply some shading and we're going to go and continue with the next room. Um, so that was it for this video, folks. I would like to thank you guys for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.